Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, for those of you who are studying AQA's new World and Lives anthology, you are definitely well aware by this stage that Percy Shelley's sonnet, England in 1819, forms part of this anthology. Now, what I want to do within this lesson is begin by going over important contextual information, the background information that really influenced Percy Shelley when he was writing this powerful sonnet. And remember that Shelley is no stranger to sonnets, okay? He uses sonnets quite ironically in a lot of his writings, okay? Another sonnet that comes to mind, which is used quite ironically, is Ozymandias. And in this case, in England, 1819, he uses the sonnet form. Remember that sonnets are traditionally love poems, okay? But he uses it ironically to criticize the monarchy and the government. Okay, but before I go into a detailed line by line analysis of the sonnet, especially if you're studying this, I have firstly created a bit of a mind map going over the important contextual information that you need to be aware of and to be quite fluent in if you're writing about this poem as part of AQA's World and Lives anthology. Okay, so I'm going to begin by going over that and then afterwards I'll do a line by line analysis of the sonnet itself. Now, remember, in terms of Percy Shelley himself, remember that. He lived in 1792 to 1822 and he was very infamous, okay? Very well known during this time for his scandals. Remember that Percy Shelley was basically a kind of mini celebrity at the time, okay? So of course today we know of like these rich and famous celebrities and some of them are very scandalous and lead quite scandalous kind of bad boy lives. Percy Shelley was a little bit like that, okay, in his time. He was born to an aristocratic family, but he was quite a rebel. And one of the scandals that he was involved in, which led him to be disinherited by his father, was he decided to marry a 16-year-old girl called Harriet Goodman. And this was seen as scandalous at the time because she wasn't of his social status. She wasn't from an aristocratic background. She was actually the daughter of a merchant, a very successful merchant, but it was still a merchant, which was not the same social status as as Percy Shelley's family and this was seen as really scandalous to do at the time okay so Percy Shelley in spite of his father's objections and in spite of his family's objections he still decided the rebel that he was to go ahead with a marriage however adding more to the scandal and the intrigue around Percy Shelley's life Harriet his first wife ended up committing suicide okay so she killed herself and then he remarried he married a second time and this time to a woman a very famous author called Mary Shelley, okay? So Mary Shelley is famously known for being the author behind the uh, book Frankenstein, okay? So she's the one that authored Frankenstein and she was married to Percy Shelley, okay? And remember, finally, that Percy Shelley died a really uh, quite early in his life, okay? So he didn't live very long. He died when he was 29 years old in a boating accident in Italy. He ended up drowning, okay? So his life was very short-lived as well. Now, remember that Percy Shelley, in terms of his writing, he's known as a romantic poet. Remember that romantic poetry is not writing about love, okay? Contrary to the name. Romantic poetry simply means authors and poets who see anything to do with nature as beautiful, as perfect, and anything that takes us away from nature, for example, cities, as being quite corrupt, okay? So you use a lot of natural language and natural imagery in their writing, okay? So Percy Shelley was a romantic poet with very radical socialist and atheist beliefs, okay? Remember that socialists tend to um, believe that especially wealthy people should share the wealth a little bit more, okay? It goes against kind of capitalist ideas. And remember that Percy Shelley himself coming from an aristocratic family who would very much be quite capitalist, him holding socialist beliefs was something that was seen as quite radical. More so in a very religious society, him being atheist was seen as almost, you know, unspeakable, okay? So he was a very radical person. That's why he was such a scandalous person, okay? Now, when it comes to the poem itself, it's really important to bear in mind that England in 1819 was written at a time of political crises in England, okay? There was a lot of political chaos during the time that Percy Shelley wrote this. And also this poem was written during the reign of King George III, who was mentally unwell and mentally ill, and he made a series of bad political decisions, okay? Now, the poem itself, England in 1819, was inspired by the Peterloo Massacre. You need to be familiar with the Peterloo Massacre, and I'm going to explain to you what happened during this massacre. This really kind of inspired a lot of outrage within lots of people who witnessed this massacre and heard about it, but also especially Percy Shelley, who was really driven to write this poem, okay? So the Peterloo Massacre, which is on the 16th of August, basically it happened 
happened after the Napoleonic Wars. So the Napoleonic Wars, which were in 1803 to 1815, were basically just a series of wars between England and France. But what that, what that led to was Britain and England became economically quite unstable, okay? Because it was obviously spending all of this money on these wars, okay? And because England's economy was quite bad, there was a lot of high unemployment, right? So loads of regular people just were unable to support themselves with jobs. And there were corn laws, okay? So corn, the actual um, thing to eat, right? There were a series of corn laws that were passed, which made food expensive, okay? So during this time in 1819, there was basically a perfect storm brewing, okay? Now, people were understandably quite enraged. A lot of peasants, a lot of working class people, a lot of just normal, regular, everyday people were quite outraged and they wanted to see change, okay? They wanted the ch parliament to change, okay? The parliament, there was a parliament, but the king still had lots of power and the parliament was just seen as being part of his, within his pocket, okay? They, the parliamentarians were not seen as very effective. And of course, also the king, who was mentally ill, was not seen as quite effective and he'd made lots of really bad decisions, okay? So lots of regular people basically got super, super angry and enraged with what was going on. And what that led to was 60,000 people gathered in Manchester and marched on St. Peter's Field, okay? And this is where, you know, Peter Lou is, okay? Now, what they simply wanted, and it was a very pr a peaceful protest, okay? So this, uh, this protest that happened in Peterloo, very peaceful, and they simply wanted to have the right to vote because at that time, the only people who had the right to vote were men and very rich men, okay? Only about around 11% of the population. So very tiny percent of people were able to affect what was happening politically in the country. These people just wanted the right to vote and obviously more democracy and the prices of food to go lower, okay? So that they can actually literally feed themselves, okay? However, this ended in tragedy. This very peaceful protest, which was asking for very reasonable demands, led to the king and parliament calling in an armed cavalry, right? Basically an army, you know, who have like, who are on horsebacks with swords and stuff. And this armed cavalry stormed this peaceful crowd and killed 15 people, including a child, and hundreds more people were injured okay so basically rather than you know those people in power like the king and parliament basically listening to these people's very peaceful demands and very reasonable demands actually they were punished okay so this cavalry came and then ended up killing a bunch of them and injuring hundreds more and of course this um, massacre which was called the peterloo massacre sparked huge outrage across england including outrage within Peter Shelley himself, okay? So he was so outraged that he wrote this really, really powerful sonnet as a direct criticism of both the king, the monarchy by extension, and parliament, okay? So that's really it when it comes to important contextual information to be familiar with, with this poem. Now that you have this in mind, let's now go into a line-by-line -line analysis of the sonnet.